Hello and welcome to another video from Dazatron's Diorama Llama. And so for this monthly make, we're going to look at making a sci-fi door. So you know those big kind of industrial kind of futuristic doors um, that kind of separate out, kind of think kind of aliens, films like that. Um, that's what we're looking at for this month. So you'll need a piece of styrofoam, round about an inch thick, um, you just need a pretty, I suppose, thick piece of styrofoam for this one. So you also need a figure that you're going to use to kind of get the dimensions that you need. So I'm using a Cosmic Legions figure by the Four Horsemen. But you can use whatever figure that you want, really. And actually, I'll show you at the end. I think this door works for a majority of toy lines, you know. So um, I wouldn't worry too much about the size. So we just need to make sure, particularly if you're working with an off cut like I am here, that um, all my kind of angles are correct, all the dimensions are correct. So um, each side is, yeah, the same measurement, really. Um, we don't want any kind of wonky lines um, as we're kind of creating something that's meant to look like it's been made in a factory or possibly, I suppose, even alien technology. We want it to look reasonably neat whereas with a lot of my other makes um they are kind of more organic kind of shapes where it doesn't matter quite so much so i just need to come up with a design i'd encourage you to use something like pinterest or any search engine really um just to look at sci-fi doors so you know things like warhammer 40k as i've already mentioned you know the alien films and there's many other kind of futuristic or kind of science fiction films that you can tap into to get some ideas. I tend not to like to just copy somebody else's design, um, but I like to look at a range of different ideas and then kind of take bits from each to kind of then make it into my own. And that's what I'd encourage you to do here. Just kind of doodle some ideas until you're happy with the shapes and it has that kind of feel that you are looking for. And... That's really personal to you. You know, you might look at my door and think, yeah, it's what you want. But you might look at it and think it's not quite what I'm after. But again, hopefully the techniques you can still kind of use and take away some of the kind of the tips from this uh, tutorial. So the height of my door is about 23 centimetres. And the width of the door is, yeah, about 14 centimeters um i will go from inches and centimeters and i apologies for that um i just tend to use what is there when i'm looking at the ruler um so i'm trying to find the halfway point now and because i want the door to look reasonably symmetrical um from kind of top to bottom so i'm just kind of adding this line of symmetry here just to help me to do that so I'm referring back to my kind of sketch. And then I'm just trying to kind of line things up. And, you know, you can do this by eye. You can do it by measurement. It's up to you. So I've decided that the kind of um, the main opening of the door, as it's got more of an irregular shape, so it's almost like um, half an octagon, the end piece is going to be about three inches in height. And so I'm just trying to divide up the door into those kind of sections. Um, if this was a normal door, then obviously we would just have kind of a, a vertical line kind of straight down the middle or at the end. If these were kind of, you know, doors that slide open, which that's the kind of door that I'm creating here. And these kind of really heavy duty kind of doors that kind of would pull apart. That's the, um, that's what I'm looking for. So I'm just kind of creating these angles. And again, I've just done this by eye. I'm just making sure that the measurements I use at the top are the same at the bottom. Again, just to kind of create that symmetrical look. So I've pretty much got my kind of dividing line there for the two halves of the door. And I think that kind of gives it that kind of science fiction feel. 
And so now I need to try and create some kind of indented areas. You often find that, don't you? When you look at kind of science fiction doors, you've got these kind of raised parts or these parts that are a bit more indented. And so that's the, uh, again, the look that I'm going for. So I want to almost create this kind of border of about one and a half centimetres around the edge. So it's almost like a frame. And I think it's, again, important to kind of keep those measurements on both sides. So it's got that kind of continuity throughout. Now, I'm just using a Sharpie pen, or you can use a felt tip pen for this. Um, I, I would suggest not to use something like um, a ballpoint pen or a pencil, just because it will actually engrave the styrofoam, as the styrofoam is quite soft. So using something like a felt tip or a Sharpie, if you do make a mistake, it won't matter. Although you'll see the lines on the surface when you paint it, you'll paint over those. So don't worry about making mistakes or even changing your design as you go through. Yeah, so I don't want these kind of, um, I don't want that kind of triangle kind of corner just want to cut those off again i'm looking for that kind of hexagon or octagon kind of shape and so now i'm just repeating the process on the other side So you can see I've tried to speed this up a little bit just so it's not quite so boring to watch. <laughs> and again, just to kind of keep that consistency, I'm just trying to decide if I want this to be like triangles or again to kind of cut off those edges. So that's the, that's the design that I've gone for. So I'm just using a floristry knife and I'm just trying to keep the blade nice and sharp. Um, as this is a fresh cut and again I want to keep those angles as smooth as I can if you've got a desktop um, electric wire foam cutter um, you'll have no problem getting those really neat kind of lines and angles um, as I have a, a kind of a hands um, or handheld um, electric foam cutter that's what I usually use for my organic makes so when I'm making kind of rock faces things like that you don't get that really neat line um, you tend to get kind of a an irregular finish so that's why I'm using the floristry knife or you could use just a Stanley blade whatever knife that you have at hand but it's really important to keep it sharp and so you get that nice smooth finish I mean, another reason why I like to use some of these kind of basic tools is I'm trying to show you that you don't have to go out and buy lots of expensive equipment to make these dioramas. Um, that's been one of the, I suppose, the things that I've stuck to since starting this channel is how to kind of create these dioramas on a budget. So, in fact, all of these makes that I've made up until now which is about a year and a half ago, I've all used the same order of styrofoam. Um, I haven't had to do a reorder yet. So I haven't run out of styrofoam yet, basically. So again, sticking to the basic tools, I'm just using just a, a regular saw there. Um, I don't have a big studio space or a workshop. I'm not even very good at DIY. Um, so I have a few bits around and yeah, you don't always get the neatest cut, but actually you can get by with just some basic tools. And I think sometimes when you're starting um, to look into dioramas, it can get a little bit daunting when you see the amount of materials that some people use. And you just don't have to do that. You can use some very basic materials and tools 
and get some really good kind of work from that. So, yeah, so that's why I'm kind of showing you these various techniques with just limited tools. So I've used the saw blade to cut off, um, if you like, the front of the door, which is about, I suppose, 75 millimetres. It's not quite a centimetre. And you can see the difference there between the back and the front. And I've just put an arrow on there just so I can make sure I've got the piece the right way round um, so that everything kind of lines up properly. So I've already cut out one section, which is one of the areas that will be indented to kind of create that kind of futuristic kind of door look. And because I've used a saw to cut into the styrofoam, that's left quite a nasty texture underneath. So I've used a bit of wet and dry paper there just to kind of smooth that out again to give it that more, I suppose, of a metallic finish, which is what I'm looking for. So I'm just going to start to cut out some of the other kind of sections. And what's really important with this is that you try and get those corners as accurate as possible. So I'm not even using a ruler here just to kind of get the, the corners cut how I want them. So I'm just kind of turning the styrofoam around and very gently kind of pushing into that corner with the knife. Um, I don't want to go over my guidelines as that will, again, um, make it look a little bit more artificial. I want this to look like, it, again, it's been laser cut or cut in a factory or by some sort of alien technology. You know, that that's the, the kind of finish that I'm looking for, which is not what I usually do in my makes. I'm a bit kind of more rough and ready. So you do need to kind of really take your time on this. Um, one of the things you'll notice if you've actually started working with styrofoam is as you kind of press quite heavy with a knife, it will actually tear the styrofoam, which again, if you're creating a rock face, fantastic. It actually works in your favor to create that texture. But when you're creating this kind of machine or factory look, you don't want that. So you really do need to kind of slow down for something like this. So because sometimes when I'm using the safety ruler, I can't see my guidelines or where I need to kind of stop or start. I'm just extending those guidelines out so I can kind of put my ruler in place and still see where I need to start and where I need to stop. Yeah, I probably should have kind of sped this up really just to make it a little bit more interesting to watch. But again, nice and slow, not too heavy handed. Get as smooth a cut as you can and then just keep doing that and you'll feel when the knife goes through the styrofoam. So you can see that I'm gently just pushing that out just to see where it's still attached or if I need to do any more kind of cuts in places. And I'm going to keep hold of all those off cuts. Um, you, you know, I tend to throw very little away. I think even, you know, things that seem like, even if you look at the bottom of my, um, my kind of tray there, you can see all those tiny bits of styrofoam, even all those bits I keep, cause you can use that to kind of create textures things like soil or dirt. Um, so yeah, keep hold of everything is what I would say. So I've cut out the various sections. I'm just lining this all up. And I'm pretty happy with that. You can see the difference with the texture, with the kind of the bottom section there where I've used the wet and dry paper and the other two sections where I haven't. So I'm just making sure that's all smoothed out. And a really fine sandpaper is what you need for this. Or as I said, wet and dry paper is really good as well. So I don't want there to be any dents. Now you might want that more kind of, um, I suppose, war-torn kind of look, you know, as if, you know, it's been shot by lasers 
or whatever it might be, you know. So, you, yeah, you can add dents and kind of laser blasts into this door if you want to, you know. Go to town on it. So I'm just using some small files there just to get into the corners and try and keep this as, again, as neat as possible. So I'm just checking this against my figure, see if I'm happy with the scale, which I am. Now, at the moment, I don't need to actually divide this door because um, originally when I started to create this diorama, I wanted the door to be closed. Um, but if you wanted to, um, you could um, split the door in half and have the door kind of opening. And in fact, if you kind of watch this video to the end, um, I do have a go at doing that. And I'll, I'll give you some ideas about um, what you could do to make that look a little bit more interesting. So I'm just drawing around these parts that are kind of now look like they're indented. So these kind of cut out shapes. Again, just using a Sharpie or felted pen, as I don't want to actually create an indent in the styrofoam. And I tend to like using the Gorilla Epoxy glue. You don't have to, as long as the glue is styrofoam safe, as some glues will actually melt the styrofoam. Um, but a lot of glues out there are styrofoam safe, and um, you could pretty much use any of those so I've created a good amount of um, epoxy glue there. You can see there's quite a large amount and I've given that a good mix. And the reason why I've added quite a lot is if you watch my last monthly make, which was the, um, the impact crater, um, I did the same technique and I kind of ran out of glue. And uh, because this kind of, this glue goes off quite quickly, I, didn't want, I wanted to make sure that didn't happen really. So, even now, I'm starting to run out of glue. So I'm trying to get as much of that on as possible, as quickly as possible. Now you have got about 15 minutes work time. So it's actually not too bad. So I'm just lining all of that up. And then, yeah, you may want to wear gloves when you're using that glue as it's it's yeah it's not very good for your hands so you may want to wear protection for that so i'm just using a piece of scrap paper there on top and then some nice kind of thick books to place on top just to kind of weigh that down and again give it a good 15 to 30 minutes um to be fair i would give it as long as you possibly can um i sometimes even leave these overnight just to make sure it's stuck as you know permanently as possible so i just got some of my actually my favorite artist books on there so yeah here's the next day and i want some sort of us again a kind of futuristic kind of lock um on there so this is my kind of my bits and bobs draw that you can see here so anything that i think kind of looks Pretty cool. I tend to stick in one of those compartments for, you know, a later use. So just found out a few bits. Don't ask me what all of these are. Lots of these are kind of parts from various things. Um, I did take apart a printer quite recently. In fact, it was a photocopier as well at my school. So I was able to, because they were kind of throwing these bits out, I was able to take some of them apart and just keep some bits and pieces from them. So I'm just trying to work out what would work best, what's going to have that kind of, that feel to it. Again, I'm not too sure what that's from. But the, you, there is like um, a Lego piece that you could use. So some of these are kind of from Lego pieces and they tend to work quite well. I want it to kind of look like, I suppose, I don't know, it's like a, an eye kind of scanner or face scanner, something like that. So I think that Lego piece would work actually quite well. 
I'm sure if you look around, you, you'll be able to find something. But what actually ended up, um, I suppose, using is actually the end of a razor blade. I quite like when you, you know, when you take up take the end off when you kind of replace the blade of a razor blade you get that kind of it's quite futuristic looking i think anyway um and i quite like seeing even the blades behind it um it kind of gives that impression that these are kind of some sort of kind of lasers so that's what i've decided to go for and because you've got a cover on the razor blade it actually works really well um, so one, obviously that keeps it safe because you don't want to be touching the blades themselves. Um, and it kind of almost creates this kind of, um, compartment if you like. So I've kind of drawn around it and I've just made some cuts and because I've already glued this together, um, I'm having to make life a bit more difficult for myself, uh, whereas it would have been much easier if I'd have started this stage um, before I glued these two kind of panels together. Um, so my advice to you would be to actually cut it out first and then you won't have to use something like a file and kind of chip away bits of the styrofoam as I'm doing here. Um, you could just use a, a knife, cut that out nice and neat and then stick those two pieces together. So... Um, yeah, I would just think about that. And so that slots in quite nicely. Now, because it slots in really firmly, I don't feel I need to glue that in place. But you could you could do that, no problem, if you wish to. So, you know, I was talking about those kind of off cuts and keeping them. So even just the dust that you kind of get left over when you're cutting into styrofoam mixing that with a bit of glue a bit of pva a bit of paint and uh, that makes a really good filler so i'm just using that now to fill the sides i've let that dry and then just using again a handheld file smooth that out and that would give you again a much neater finish so we're coming to the kind of the paintwork. So very often I like to put down a kind of a primer. Um, you could use an actual primer, um, which sometimes is white or grey. Um, I like to use black in this case. So I'm just using cheap acrylic paints. I'm not buying expensive paints. Um, if you like using things like Citadel paints, which are actually quite expensive. They're great paints to use, um, brilliant for miniatures. But when you work it at this scale, I would use something much cheaper than that. So go to any kind of, um, I suppose, stationery store. Um, we've got somewhere in the UK places like The Works or The Range, and um, they tend to sell cheap kind of acrylic paints. Even Poundland, you know, pound stores, you can pick up cheap paint sets and for this kind of work it's absolutely fine so i'm just using this kind of yellow ochre which you've you'd have seen me use lots of times before um i quite like it's got that kind of gold color i don't need to look like metallic gold but that's the color that i wanted to go for you might go for a brighter yellow it's completely up to you but you do tend to find these kind of yellow and black kind of um I don't know what they are. I mean, is it almost like a warning thing or like a hazard sign? I don't know. But sometimes on these kind of factory doors um, or these kind of heavy machinery doors, you see these kind of black and yellow kind of striped areas. So that's kind of what I'm looking for. So I'm just using masking tape to mask off some of those areas. And notice as well, I haven't painted it really, really neatly. You notice I've almost kind of almost sponged it on or dabbed it on. And um, I just think that gives it a bit more of a worn finish or a used look. You know, I don't want this to look like it's brand new, this door. And then I'm using white here 
Again, just to break up the surface of the door, make it look more interesting. You could keep it all one colour if you wanted to. You could choose, you know, whatever colour you like. So I am going to use some kind of metallic paint in a moment, but I just wanted to... I didn't want the, the whole door to have a metallic finish. Hence why I've got this kind of white stripe, and then I will have this kind of yellow and black kind of striped area. So notice I'm not using a lot of paint. I'm just dabbing that on so that the paint doesn't kind of slide underneath the masking tape. And I think already that's looking a bit more effective. So I've actually got this cheap acrylic kind of metallic paint. And I do like this paint because it has a nice kind of reflective quality. And so I'm just masking tape off now those areas that I've already painted. So I'm going to keep those edges as neat as possible. And then again, I can just kind of dab that on. And again, with your brushes, don't buy expensive brushes. Just go for the cheap option. Um, I quite like using a flat brush. And particularly when you start to do things like um, dry brushing, the, the cheaper the brush, the better, really. Now you may want to do the back of your door as well. It really depends on your diorama piece, where you're going to have it. Because when I create these diorama bases, which is what they are, um, they're not kind of full dioramas. Um, I don't tend to kind of do much work on the back of them as they would be placed on a shelf. So you wouldn't need to see that. Now, if you notice there, um, there's still, it's still got that kind of pitted look to the surface of the styrofoam from where I've cut it with the saw. Again, I think if you use the desktop wire cutter, you probably wouldn't have that problem. So I've just used a kind of a rubbing technique. So I've put a piece of just cheap photocopy paper over the top, use the pencil. And just very gently try to find where those indents are. So um, I don't have to kind of measure it all out, which would be a bit of a pain. So by using that kind of rubbing technique, I've got exactly the shape that I need. So I can draw around that onto some kind of foam. Again, just from hobby stores. So in the UK, you've got Hobbycraft, which is where I got this from. And it is just foam. You're getting different colours. It's not styrofoam. Um, but it's got that kind of smoother finish to it. So I'm just going to see if that fits in place. I think I need to just cut off a little bit more. Yeah, just making sure I know which way up this is going to go. And so you can see now I can just slot that in. So I'm not, again, I'm not even having to glue that in place. But this is still a little bit too big. It's just kind of bending the, the edges. So I just want to cut off a sliver just on the very edge, just so it's got a nice flush finish. So that fits in really well. So I'm just repeating that process for the other sections. And there you go, all the pieces are in place. So when I paint that now, hopefully it will have a much kind of smoother kind of feel to it. And will look a little bit more like it's made out of some kind of steel. Now what I did find with the foam is that the this particular paint, for whatever reason, tend to really kind of kind of glide it over the surface. Um, it didn't quite absorb it. So I did have to add more than one layer to get the finish that I wanted. So just be prepared for that. So I'm just putting some kind of strips of masking tape onto a cutting board. 
And I'm using the lines of the cutting board to help me with this. And so I just want to make sure that I'm cutting some strips that are the same kind of width. So I'm looking about it again, about a centimeter thickness. So you can see it, I'm lining up with the white lines on that are printed onto the uh, the cutting board themselves. And so I'm going to use those strips, which are all a centimeter in thickness. And I'm leaving a centimeter gap and just kind of trying to get the, the angle that I want for this. Now what you'll notice here is that as I get towards the bottom, it just looks a bit weird because I've already got this kind of angular strip there, um, which I've painted yellow. So I've kind of worked backwards now to kind of line it up with the, the direction or the angle of that kind of yellow strip at the bottom. And as I've moved the masking tape, you'll see it's actually peeled away some of the paint off the foam. So I will need to kind of touch all of that up. So I'm just using some black paint and a big brush. And obviously be careful, but it doesn't matter if you paint over the masking tape. That's the whole point. But this should get you some nice kind of nice lines that are neat. So I've done that all over. And I'm just adding a little bit more masking tape to the edges. And the nice thing about acrylic paint is you don't have to wait long for it to dry. So I can just peel off that masking tape. And I'm quite happy with how that looks. If you had to paint that in yourself freehand and try and get those lines that smooth, you would find that really difficult. So yeah, so I'm just doing a bit of a touch up job here. And because this has already had multiple layers of paint, as it's pulled off the paint, um, it means I'm going to add some further layers to this. So that was a bit of a pain, but that's my own fault. Um, I should have done the masking tape first before painting the foam. So again, you know, you'll be able to kind of learn from my mistakes on this one. So it looks a little bit messy at the moment, but as you add extra layers of paint, it will work. So don't worry too much about that. So yeah, the white, as it's kind of dried out, it's just kind of faded a little bit. So I'm just going over the top of that a little bit more, just so it looks a little bit fresher. Again, I'm kind of leaving the edges so it has a bit of a distressed look. And now I'm just going to take a little bit of black paint and just kind of rub that off my brush, which is kind of a, a dry brush technique. And I'm just scraping the edges, and particularly the top and bottom of the door. So whereas the door's kind of been open and shut, open and shut, as the dust has kind of, you know, blown against the door, it's kind of created that, that wear and tear, if you like. So it gives it more of a kind of worn and used look. And so I've just got my base there, which is actually the off cut. So you can see that's the same shape as the big piece, the kind of octagon piece that I cut out. So I've used that to kind of create a step and a bit of a base. Then this stuff here, when I picked up the black foam uh, from Hobbycraft in the UK, I saw some of this. Um, which again has got that kind of industrial look. Um, I've painted it silver, just using the same silver paint as before, um, giving it a couple of coats. I actually don't mind parts of the paint not kind of sticking and kind of wearing off a little bit. Again, I think it just adds to the effect. And so here we go is the, the finished door with my Cosmic Legion in place. And um, I'm pretty happy with that. And that is the thing with these diorama bases and the tutorials on this channel. I'm not trying to create a full diorama. I'm just trying to give it a little bit of a setting that really just kind of shows off these wonderful figures. You know, we spend a lot of money on these action figures. 
Um, in fact, modern figures sometimes are more expensive than vintage figures nowadays. But, you know, you want to show them off. So um, hopefully, you know, you'll like this technique. And um, I think it works with a lot of different characters from various lines. So we've got a Marvel um, Legends in there. We've got some Transformers in there. As well as some of the Cosmic Legions. And um, I just think it works really, really well. So just this, yeah, I said I'd show you um, another idea. So I picked up a Crystal figure. Um, I don't have many Marvel Legends, but um, I know I know of Crystal from you know back in the kind of the eighties. And this is a builder figure version, where you can make a character called the Void. And so a really, really good figure. Um, but obviously I didn't know what to do with these kind of builder figure pieces, these kind of tentacles. And then I thought, this would be perfect, you know, this door. You know, you kind of open the door and these kind of tentacles are starting to come out. So, um, again, I've sharpened up my blade and just where the dividing piece would be, I've cut all the way through that. Obviously, it's created this kind of bit of a texture there, so I'm going to smooth that out. And I'm just going to use actually some um, felting wool. That's all this is. Um, felting is quite a popular hobby at the moment. So again, go to hobby store. You'll be able to pick up some felting wool. And um, just to kind of create this idea of almost kind of like a mist that's kind of coming through the door as it opens. So on the base there, I've just um, put a couple of lines to where or how far open I want my doors to be. So I can kind of line those up. So when I add the glue, um, I'm not going to add glue in between in the opening. I'm just going to add it to where it needs to be. And then I'm just going to use a supporting piece of styrofoam, just an offcut, just to hold the top in place so it doesn't kind of fall apart. So again, back to the Gorilla Epoxy glue, just a little strip of that and then holding that in place. I've got my doors on my stand opened where I want them to be open and so there you can see I've kind of just I've actually made the opening just wide enough for me to kind of push in those tentacles so they hold with friction and then I've used the kind of wool to kind of almost try to create that kind of mist like feel to it and with a bit of light in the background particularly as they're kind of translucent these tentacles I think that works pretty well i mean you could make your own tentacles using scorpi or fimo or any kind of um clay that you can put in the oven and you could design it however you want to and the nice thing about tentacles are pretty easy to make but because i already had these at hand i wanted to make use of them so um i'm pretty happy with the way that looks um the mist isn't always convincing but i think it works reasonably well so thanks for watching. I hope you've got some tips and ideas from this. Please do leave a comment if you've enjoyed this video. Um, I'd love to see your thoughts and your feedback. And um, thanks for taking the time to watch. And I will see you in a month's time for another monthly make.